I think this goes to an earlier discussion we had about how I meet clients because I don't have all the benefit of being, of frankly, being one of the guys and, and getting that call all the time that says, oh, it has to be you, Nina. I wish it happened more often. It does happen. I'm not saying it doesn't, but it, that's not how I didn't have the benefit of that in starting my career. Mm -hmm. So I had to kind of get out and hustle. And so Ava was actually working as a publicist for many of my clients. Uh, she was a publicist on um, for Gina Prince Bythewood. Um, I think she also, also worked on a Casey Lemons movie. She worked for any number of my clients. And one of the things that I really pride myself on, not as a thing I've tried to cultivate as a personality trait, but I think very, I'm always very interested in other people. I'm always asking people questions. <laughs> Where is the sound man? Yes. So, yeah. We witnessed um, that. About themselves. And so the idea that I could be around Ava through, through a number of client pictures and not ask her who she was, what she was doing, what her aspirations were, that just wasn't going to happen. So she and I just became friends. And at, at one point, um, she started something. Uh, I can't wait till she does her version of this. Oh my God, it's going to be so hot. She started this thing called the uh, Urban Beauty Collective. And what it was, remember, she's a publicist. So, and this is, we, it started on VHS and then migrated to DVD. And then by the time it would have become just digital, we, her, her career had moved past it. So she goes to, so she'll go to Paramount, Sony, Warner Brothers, and she'll say, I have this DVD, 50 minutes of playing time, an hour of playing time, whatever it is, I'll put you on it, your production on it, if you pay me X amount of dollars. And in that way, she sold all the, sold all the time on this. And then we essentially signed, she signed up beauty salons. Because one of the things that's true, especially about women of color, is we spend a lot of time in beauty salons if we go to beauty salons. So it's kind of a captive audience. And we would have all kinds of, she had all kinds of incentives for the beauty salons because at the end of the tape, there would be like a beauty salon of the week or the month or whatever. And you got to like show your stuff, you know? Like, and it was only black beauty salons. And this thing became incredibly lucrative. And it was the money she made on that that allowed her to finance her first film entirely herself. And so when she came up with this urban beauty collective idea, she and I worked on it together. She did all the hard work. I just gave her a lot of encouragement. And then I was helping her with contracts and things like that. I mean, she didn't really pay me because there wasn't a lot of money involved. On, you know, it was kind of a quantity business. Um, but you know, she put them out, I think it was either once a week, once every two weeks, something like that. I can't remember. Maybe it was even once a month. But they would go out to beauty salons. And, and you have to remember, in some, some cases, we even made deals with uh, hardware suppliers because let's, you get a captive audience who are going to sit there all day long and watch your trailer over and over and over again right. or watch an interview or watch, you know, and a lot of times it was product they had already made. They didn't make it especially for this. And she said, here's an audience I can bring to you. And I forgot, but there were like, there were like thousands of beauty salons all through the country. Urban beauty salons, you know. Yeah, so it's called the Urban Beauty Sorry. Collective. Yeah. So that was one of the first things that she and I worked on together. Uh, and then she had the money together and she was going to make, at this point she'd already been doing, you know, she'd been moving into filmmaking. She always says, I went to the, um, the uh, out, what do, what do they call them, the extras on, v on DVD? Mm -hmm. I went to the extras film school because she would just like literally look at all of those and hear the director's commentary and and that's really how she learned filmmaking um, and she's very smart but uh, so we um, she had all she was doing some work on in television primarily um, you know for BT and, and other places and um, she had enough money to make her first film uh, like fifty thousand dollars and we were talking about it and she was like oh should I make this film or should I use a down, down payment for a house? And everyone she went to said, buy your house, don't make the film, use other people's money, never use your own money. 
And I think she's, I sh and, and I'm sure I wasn't the only person when she came to me, and I was like, no, you better make that movie. Because no one's going to make that movie but you, and no one's going to give you any money to make that movie. So it's a movie about black women. Who wants to make that, you know what I mean? This was called um, I Will Follow. Good advice. Yeah. In retrospect, yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, a risk. But a risk. And she made the movie, and um, um, uh, Ebert, you know, Roger Ebert, fell in love with it, reviewed it constantly, and then he wrote an article about her. What had happened is she, like me, had a family that loved the arts, and this is one of the things we have in common, and she had an, a beloved aunt who really is the character who the movie is based on, who took her to, and this is like another time and place, you used to be able to just go watch the people rehearse the Academy Awards, like literally. You're on the street, they're rehearsing, you can walk in. So her aunt took her to an Academy Award rehearsal, and they met Roger Ebert, and Roger Ebert um, and Ava, little Ava, took a thumbs up picture. And when, after he reviewed Middle of Nowhere, she sent it to him. And he said, he wrote her back something like, oh, we were much younger then. And then shortly after that, he wrote the most incredi incredibly poignant um, article about her and used the picture in the article as a centerpiece of the article about how he too had come to love the movies and the arts because of a beloved aunt and how he felt so strongly that this movie talked about the loss of a loved one in a way that very few movies did. And it, it launched her career. Relationships again. Like so it was all relationships.